Growing up when uh, things would happen and I felt, you know, all sorts of emotions, whether it was stress or sadness or frustration, I would run away. Uh, now, I didn't literally run away, but I would try to escape from whatever was going on. Uh, and I still do this, although I'm learning and growing. Um, but a, a few years ago, a childhood best friend that I grew up with, right from JK to after high school, passed away suddenly. Um, and when it happened, um, I, I don't I just I didn't know how to cope with it all um, with what I was feeling and so I ran and I hid and what I mean by that is I tried to bury the emotion so I could get to the point where I would feel nothing when I got my driver's license I'd take drives to kind of clear my mind and I'd spend hours in my room uh, and even though I still felt my emotions I would try to bury them take my mind off them distract myself hoping they would just go away eventually. Yet every single time I did that, I knew that I'd, I'd eventually face the same tension that I was hiding from. If I didn't deal with everything, I'd never actually heal. And see, you can't just run and hide from emotions forever. I wanted to forget the pain that I felt because my friend died, and for a while, it seemed like escaping was the best option. And on the outside, I seemed fine, but on the inside, I was sad, bitter, uh, and angry. I thought I could only feel better if I just stopped feeling altogether. And so maybe you can relate to my story, but maybe it's having family drama or school stress or even just the general, I'm a human living in times of pandemics and injustice kind of stress. The reality is we're all feeling this a lot these days. You know, I heard this analogy uh, that emotions are just like cell phones or, or getting calls on your phone. You know, sometimes they're unexpected and other times they are expected. And so we have the ability to answer them and connect with them. Um, we can actually put them on FaceTime and focus on nothing but them. Um, or you can just straight decline the calls, send them to voicemail um, and pretend like they don't exist. You can mute them or turn off your phone and just hide it all together. And so maybe some of you bury your emotions. When something happens that you don't like, you try to escape to something else. And think about it, like when your parents are fighting or you're having friend drama, how do you typically deal with it? When you feel the pressure to get good grades, uh, get into a good school or handle your own insecurities, how do you process all of it? Maybe you escape by binge watching Netflix shows um, where you can be part of a different story and a life that isn't your own. Uh, maybe you scroll through TikTok for hours until your mind is numb. Uh, maybe you numb the emotions by overeating so that you don't feel your emotions or um, you know, not eating at all to feel some kind of control. Maybe you take part in self-harm behaviors, hurting others, fits of rage. Maybe you try to quiet the noise of emotions with pornography or relationships or drinking um, drugs just so we don't have to feel what's going on underneath the surface, bottled up, ready to explode. In a word, we're coping. And for a lot of us, that means trying to numb or escape the things we don't want to feel. We look for ways to escape because we want relief. The problem is, Sometimes what we do for relief ends up creating more stress because ignoring doesn't make something disappear. You know that already. And so that's why today I want to share with you something that might actually be helpful. It's been helpful to me and fair warning, it kind of sounds like the worst possible idea, but just stick with me because I think it can actually help us move forward and actually cope instead of getting stuck. 
We're going to look at a passage out of the book of Lamentations in the Old Testament. The name of the book comes from the word lament, uh, which means expressing grief or mourning. It's not a word that we often use, but it's something you might feel. It's basically feeling sad. There's a whole book about feeling sad. I told you it wouldn't sound, or it would sound like, like a terrible idea, but just stick with me. You see, the writer of Lamentations, who um, we're not sure about, a, a lot of people believe it was the prophet Jeremiah, um, whoever it was, they talk about their situation this way. Uh, in Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 to 23. The thought of my suffering and homelessness is bitter beyond words. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss. Yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. And so clearly, Jeremiah is going through it. Like he says that he is bitter beyond words. We all get that. Go ahead, just... Think about something that has made you bitter beyond words. You've been there, right? And so he's hurting. It's so bad that he says he will never forget what he's feeling. And this is important to pay attention to. Jeremiah doesn't downplay what's going on. He doesn't avoid it. He doesn't drink it away, pretend it away, or sugarcoat what he's dealing with. He writes out his reality as painful and real as it is. And Jeremiah not only talks about the circumstances that caused his pain, but also about how he felt about them. He names exactly what's going on. And he doesn't stop there. He actually moves from naming how he feels to naming what is true about God. He makes sure that he tells himself truth in the middle of his difficult circumstances and feelings. And the kind of truth that gives him hope to push forward. I think that sometimes we will do anything to not feel um, all of our feelings because it honestly hurts. And so we avoid them altogether. But Jeremiah demonstrates a willingness to feel them however bad they are. The trick is to not stay there. And this is important for us too. In order to fully feel hope, we need to fully feel our other emotions however painful they might be. And so how did Jeremiah find the strength and courage to feel his difficult emotions? Because of what he says at the end of this verse. Lamentations 3 verse 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. Did you catch that? Jeremiah recognizes there is a new start. Every morning, we get a fresh dose of hope, love, and promise from God. That's how we cope, with fresh hope from God. God's love, faithfulness, and compassion allow us to cope with every negative experience or feeling we have. We can't escape the pain without escaping the good stuff on the other side. His faithfulness doesn't change. It's new every morning. And so when our pain is new, so is God's love. When our hurt is fresh, so is God's faithfulness. Because of God, uh, we can handle whatever is causing us pain. Now, that doesn't mean you should never watch Netflix if you're sad um, or eat ice cream as you calm down. It just, it just means that those, those things don't fix anything. If we want to get through them and not just around them, we have to feel them, knowing there's hope on the other side. Netflix can't heal our pain. Drinking won't make the difficulty go away. Staying up all night won't fix the problem. They'll help us escape temporarily, but they they won't help us heal. And we need to heal. So I've got this, this little, you know, kind of illustration. There's been Band-Aids here the entire time. You're probably thinking like, what in the world are we sponsored by a Band-Aid? Um, no, not a product placement, not an advertisement. Um, but I just want to, I want you to, to check this out. When we go to quick fixes, when it comes to things we're going through, they're honestly, they're like Band-Aids. They, they don't heal hurts. All they do is cover them up temporarily. 
They're coping strategies that never actually get to the heart of our hurts and the emotions that we feel. And so for example, uh, some people drink alcohol as a way to cope. And they actually don't allow themselves to acknowledge and and experience the difficult circumstances and feelings. And as a result, they don't find hope. And because of that, they need to drink more and more to avoid the emotions that always seem to come back. If we want to heal, we need to do what Jeremiah did. We need to, number one, lament. And lamenting is just naming our difficulties, saying how we feel about it, refusing to act like it's no big deal. When you lament, be specific. Say them out loud or write them down. And maybe most importantly, say them to God. Your heavenly father wants to hear, especially when you're hurting. He's not mad if you say, hey, this is awful or I'm bitter beyond words. You can be honest with him. And then number two, just like Jeremiah did, name the hope. Understand that in the midst of our circumstances and feelings, there's still hope. A bad day, uh, a bad moment, a bad couple of weeks does not equal a bad life. God always meets us on the other side. Just like we're specific about our pain, we need to name specifically what's true and where our hope is and name it over and over and over. This is how we can begin to heal our hurts instead of trying to escape them. And as we do this this hard work, here's what we realize. You have to feel to move forward. And so I want you to just take some time and think about how you avoid feeling. Like, what are you using to turn off or turn down your feelings? Is it social media, uh, video games, sleeping, eating or not eating? It isn't that these things in and of themselves are bad, it's that they're being used to do something they weren't meant to do, which is keep us from dealing with reality. And when these things are used the wrong way, they'll never accomplish what we want them to. Or maybe you find yourself engaging in self-harm, drinking, smoking, pornography, or some other thing that only you know about. In these cases, you aren't just numbing the pain, you're hurting yourself. And you need to know that the additional pain that you're creating doesn't erase the other pain. It doesn't make it go away. And hey, listen, I get it. Sometimes big pain causes us to get stuck into coping behaviors we never meant to use long-term. If you're using something to numb your feelings and you just, you aren't sure that you can stop, invite other people into your life. Find a trusted friend, adult, or a life group leader to help process what's going on. They can help you acknowledge what you're going through, but also they can help remind you of hope when you need it. And there will come a time when we all need the reminder. And so for those of you maybe watching this wondering, why would I tell someone else my pain when I haven't even admitted to it myself? And I get that. For you, I I want you to ask yourself, what is getting in the way of me healing for real? You see, many of us are are, uh, embarrassed, ashamed, afraid of judgment, Some of us have believed that this lie, uh, this lie that having big pain or big emotions is is weakness. Uh, Opening up and sharing with others who are trustworthy will not only challenge the lies that hold you back, but they can actually help lead you to peace and healing. And if you aren't quite ready to say it out loud, I would encourage you, write it down. And then, when you're ready, share them with someone else. You may even wanna meet with your life group leader to, to help you figure it out. Nobody should deal with the hurt from life alone. We all need each other. In fact, that's one of the biggest reasons why we have life groups. Life groups are created so that we can experience life together, all of life, not just the good parts. And so if you aren't sure who to talk to, 
I want to encourage you to start with your life group leader. You don't even have to look them in the eye. Send them a text, one or two words, just letting them know you're up for a conversation. They won't make it weird and, and you will be glad that you did. I honestly believe that we just, we can't escape what we feel. We weren't meant to. We can numb it for a little while, but eventually we have to feel to move uh, forward toward the big, abundant, joy-filled, better than you think is possible right now life that God wants for us in him.